Are you a casual Terraria player? Are you unsure about what to do in this massive game? Or perhaps you just want to be entertained? Well, look no further. Welcome to the Casual Terrarian, where we will do a guided playthrough full of tips and tricks for the Terraria casual. So let's jump right in right now. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome to Zuzu Corn Games, where we play games by casuals for casuals. Here, we aim to entertain and encourage you for the week ahead. And well, I just want to let you know that I care about you, so feel free to comment a little about how your week has been so far. I'll be sure to reply. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so that you won't miss another video. Alright, enough about all that, let's start by making a character. What I like to do is press the random button over and over until I see something that I don't mind playing as. Alright, let's go with this one. Um, Zuzu Corn, I guess? Alright, next we'll be going for a medium world on normal difficulty. Let's go with the casual corn field. There we go. Yeah, that sounds good. I have done many expert world playthroughs, but in the spirit of the casual gamer, let's go with normal, which is what most casuals would start out with. Alright, so welcome to the casual cornfield, our world for the guided playthrough. So the first thing we should do is chop some trees and build a house. That will help us survive the night. Alright, so the way to cut trees is to use the axe and hold down the cursor on the base of the tree. Clicking on the base ensures that the whole tree will break apart after you chop it down, like so. Alright, with some wood collected, let's start on our basic house, just to protect us from monsters during the night. Try not to build too small a house or NPCs might not move in in the future. So with 10 wood, let's make a workbench, which unlocks more craftables when you are standing near it. This is important, so make sure you have one as soon as you can. So with our workbench, we can make doors to seal up our house now. Many people are against box houses, but honestly, it's your playthrough, you can do anything you want. Let's get some torches as well, made with wood and gel, to light up the place a little. There we go. I won't be doing box houses, but since it's just the beginning, I'm not too worried about this shape and size for now. So we can transform it later on, I guess. So after the house, it's a good idea to explore the surface first. Pots like these usually give us some useful items like torches, ropes or money, so make sure you break them when you see one. So some of you might find yourself dropping into a hole like this, which is too deep to jump out of. Well, the solution is to make these wood platforms. Place the platforms like so, and there we go, we can jump on them to leave. Always carry some wood with you, just in case. Another cool thing you can do is to press the left control button on your keyboard, which triggers the smart block placement. With that on, you can place platforms directly into stairs, like so. Oops, let me fix that a little. And... Alright, there we go. Gather anything you can, because almost every item has a use somewhere. Mushrooms, for example, are used in some potions, or can be eaten for small amounts of healing. If you're in a pinch, press the H key to drink a potion from your inventory. Alright, notice how the background changes? That means that the biome has changed. In Terraria, most biomes are based on the type of blocks present. For example, the desert biome requires large amount of sand blocks. Check out the wiki if you want the exact details. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you mine sand blocks, other sand blocks will fall down just like this. Do be careful, cause if you get caught in some, you can actually die. So the desert is a dangerous biome at the beginning, so do be careful. Ah, look at that, an ant lion swarmer. I think I'm gonna die. See, look what I told you. The desert's a dangerous place. But as a softcore character in a normal world, you shouldn't worry too much about dying. One thing I forgot and that's to make a better weapon, in this case a wooden sword. 
You can craft a few swords to get a good modifier on it, which will increase its stats. I didn't get one this time, but let's just move on. Alright, so on the right there's already a natural spawning cave downwards. With a handful of torches, let's go. So, when you go down, you can find more ores, which can be used for crafting better weapons and armor. And also, you can find some life crystals which increase your maximum health. Oh look, a chest already. Alright, some stairs. Alright, so we got a radar which tells us how many enemies are around us. And some other loot. Alright, further down, we already found an underground house, which usually has a chest and some statue sometimes. To equip your accessories, open your inventory and click over here. Make sure you use the one on the right, because the middle slots are for the social slot, which do not give any stat bonuses. We already got a cloud in a bottle, which lets us double jump. This actually saves us from fall damage if you jump again right before you land. Let's take the chandelier and the chest along with us. So look, I've already found some silver ore, make sure you get as much as you can. See the shiny colours? These are gems, which we need for a gem hook, which we should try to get ASAP. You need 15 gems of the same kind for the hook, but it really helps with mobility a lot. Oh whoops! Whoa whoa whoa! Whoa, almost died there. But well, this brings me to traps. This is a boulder trap, where a rolling boulder is dropped from above. Well, if I got hit there, I probably would have died. See this pressure plate? This small thing? When I step over it, look, the blocks turn on and off. This is called actuation, which we can do ourselves as we progress through Terraria. But just be careful of pressure plates when you're spelunking. Alright, I've explored the area and I don't think I want to explore more for now, so I'm going to use a recall potion to return home. Ah, it's almost morning. Looks like we spent the first night underground. Now that we're back, let's make a furnace with stone, wood and torches. Let's gather more wood too. Clean up the area a little. There we go. Now let's start expanding our house. My advice for beginner builders like myself is to just build. Anything will look nice if you decorate it well. But you won't be able to build something nice if you don't ever try. Alright, let's make space for platforms so we can go through the levels. There we go. Now let's make some different blocks. Terraria has so many different blocks, so just experiment with anything that you see. Let's also make an anvil with iron bars, another crafting station that lets us craft things from metal bars. To get metal bars from ore, just craft them while standing near the furnace. Alright, let's try to make our house look a bit more interesting. Let's just try putting some grey bricks. Alright. Alright, that looks fine. I also made a heavy workbench, which is near my gold chest. It unlocks more crafting options, so make one if you want to explore. Alright, so let's go with a zigzag. Nice! You can also make glass from sand near the furnace too. Let's place some stone slab walls. Maybe I'll have wood for the top there. Yep, that looks alright. And a chandelier to finish it off. You know, I'm just gonna let the zombies in. Because the sound is really annoying. Oh, 
Oh, we got a shackle already. One defense, with two defense as the modifier, for a total of three. That's nice. Oh, look at that. It's a falling star. You can collect it from inside your house. Like this. Falling stars are used in so many ways, mainly to make mana stars that increase your total mana, or as ammo for a certain weapon later on. By the way, if you want to check if the room you've built can house an NPC or not, click the housing button. And then like this, you can check its suitability. NPC houses need a table, a crafting bench works as well, a chair, and a light source. It must also be fully walled and not too small. Check the wiki for the exact details. Alright, exploring for the right, and we've already found another chest. Ah, an aglet. Movement speed increase. That's always helpful. Movement speed is really important in Terraria. Alright, we stumbled across a lucky find. A surface level pyramid. In here, there'll be a treasure room near the top. These bags contain money, so let's get those too. So in ours we got... Oh, just some vanity items. Oh, and what do you know, the merchant moved in. So vanity items are only for show, or skins as you might know otherwise. So make sure you equip them in the social slot. Let's grab the banners for decoration as well. Alright, so here we are in the ice biome, which is below the pyramid. Now this, this is a dangerous area, because all of it is thin ice. If you are not careful, you will drop all the way down and just die. Nothing much here anymore, so I'm just gonna go back for now. Alright, the merchant is important for two main things. The piggy bank and the bug net. The piggy bank is an extra storage separate from your inventory. So think of it as having an inventory in your inventory. The bug net can help you earn a little bit of money if you're desperate too. You can catch a bunny like this and sell it. I want it mostly for this. See these rocks? If you break them open, a worm might pop out. There, we got one already. Use the net to catch it. Worms and other insects are used as bait, which will be useful later on. So do catch any that you find. Alright, selling the bunny gives us... 3 silver. Alright, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Do leave a like and a comment on what else you'd like to see. Don't forget to subscribe too, so you won't miss the next episode of The Casual Terrarian. Check out my other videos too. I play all types of games, from Monster Hunter to Undermine. So see you soon and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.